Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about the relationship between interest rates and bond prices. After watching this video, if you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up your total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics AP exams. Let's get into the content. So the first thing we're going to talk about is different financial assets. Financial assets are places where people can house their wealth and they all have some advantages and disadvantages. The first financial asset are stocks. Stocks represent ownership in a corporation. Here I have 5,000 shares of General Motors stock from before they went bankrupt. You buy these shares and you hope that the value of these shares will go up over time. That is the General Motors Corporation pieces or shares increase in value as the company gets more valuable. Some people may house their wealth in the form of stocks because they hope that the stocks will become more valuable in the future where they can sell them for profit. Another place to put your wealth is in the form of bonds. Bonds are loans to a corporation or a government. The person who purchases these bonds is essentially loaning money to the business or the government and they will be paid back with their original amount, the principal, plus interest over time. Now the problem with stocks and bonds is they are not immediately liquid. Liquidity refers to the ability of an asset to be used to purchase goods and services. I can't purchase goods and services with a stock certificate and I can't purchase them with a bond either. They are not liquid. The last financial asset we're going to talk about is of course money. Money is liquid. It can be used immediately to purchase goods and services. The money can be in my checking or savings account or it can be in the form of currency cash or coins. Currency is of course the most liquid of all financial assets. It can be immediately used to purchase goods and services. So for the rest of this video we're going to talk about bond prices and the relationship to the interest rates we see in the markets. This railroad bond was originally sold in 1893 for $1,000 and the coupons attached to this bond indicate that the owner of the bond was paid $50 per year, $25 every six months. And since the price of the bond was $1,000, that means in 1893, when this bond was originally printed and sold, we had a 5% equilibrium interest rate because $50 is 5% of 1,000. So let's say that in 1920, the equilibrium interest rate increases to 10% up from the original 5%. Since the bond still only pays $50 per year, we're assuming it never expires here, then the $50 that it pays per year is no longer going to be worth the original $1,000 purchase price. And so that original purchase price of $1,000 is going to drop all the way to $500 because $50 is 10% of 500, where it's only 5% of 1,000. So since that interest rate went up, the price of the bond, if I were to sell that bond on the open market in 1920, would drop down to $500 in price. Now let's say that in 1940, the equilibrium interest rate falls all the way down to 2.5%. Well, that bond still pays $50 per year. So how is that new lower interest rate going to impact the price of the bond? Well, to bring that yield, the amount that the investor earns on a yearly basis all the way down to 2.5%, the price of the bond will have to increase all the way up to $2,000 because $50 a year is 2.5% of $2,000. In summary, there's going to be an inverse relationship between the interest rate and bond prices. If interest rates fall, bond prices are going to increase. And if interest rates increase, bond prices are going to fall. That is the relationship you're going to see over and over again in your AP macroeconomics exams. Those changes in interest rates can come from the loanable funds market or the money market that you will learn about later in this class. The last thing we're going to talk about for this section is the relationship between interest rates and opportunity cost. Now bonds earn interest. As we saw earlier, this bond pays $50 per year and you earn interest when you hold your assets in bonds. Money on the other hand does not earn interest. So when I hold my assets as money, I am going to lose the interest that I could have earned if I purchased a bond. So when it comes to deciding how you're going to hold your wealth or which financial assets you will put your wealth in, it's really a choice. Are you going to earn interest or are you going to hold your assets as money and forego that interest? Well, that means that the choice of holding money will come at an opportunity cost of the interest you would earn by buying bonds. So in macroeconomics, we say that the opportunity cost of holding money is the equilibrium interest rate. And when you learn about the money market graph, you will learn that the demand for money 
is downward sloping, which indicates the inverse relationship between the interest rate and the quantity of money that people demand. At higher equilibrium interest rates, people are going to demand lower quantities of money because those high interest rates encourage people to purchase the assets, bonds in this case. And when interest rates fall, we are going to see an increase in the quantity of money demanded because at lower interest rates, people are going to have a liquidity preference. They prefer the ability to buy goods and services with their assets. So they are more likely to forego the interest they could have gotten had they purchased bonds. And when the interest rate rises, people are going to demand less money and purchase more of those interest bearing assets. Whew. We got through it. That was a lot of information there. And if you knew it all, you are on your way to acing your next exam. If you need a little more help, head down to the links below where there are lots of games and activities from reviewecon.com to help you study and practice the skills you need for that next exam. If you want to support this channel, make sure you like and subscribe and then head over to reviewecon.com and pick up the total review booklet with everything you need to know to pass your final exam or AP economics exam. Thank you very much. I'll see you guys next time.